Welcome back to this series on the nine stages of ego development theory. This theory was pioneered by Jane Lovinger, then further developed by Suzanne Kit Groder. I'm Johanna Fairmond, and in this episode, I'll be describing the magician which is the penultimate stage of ego development theory. The magician is also known as the alchemist or the jester, yet these labels don't express the uniqueness and the depth of understanding that those who attain this level of ego are able to reach. Less than 1% of the population ever reach this stage. And as we progress through the nine stages of ego development theory to higher ego stages like this one, it becomes more difficult to find many shared behavioral characteristics within each stage. So I'm really interested to know how many of you, after learning about the magician, are going to be able to relate to this ego stage, if any of you. So please let me know in the comments. At the magician stage, we realize that we all live and are influenced by a world of human constructs. Our language is made up of symbols for ideas. For example, if I say the word plant, we're each going to have a different image of what that looks like. For some of us, a plant can be a place to work. For others, it could be a flower or a plant could even be a spy. So you need more than simply the word to understand what plant I'm referring to. You need context, and even then, our images can still be completely different. So at this level of ego, we start to realize that our knowledge depends on each person's interpretation as well as the context. Magicians realize that the ego serves both as an interpretive reality, where it's the center, and also as a self-identity. And this egoic self is seen as a barrier to increased growth and understanding. And magicians may become overly critical of themselves when they first become aware of their own ego attachment. However, when they practice self-observation, they can view their own attachment to having egoic desires and just let it go. In this way, they learn to become tolerant of themselves, to accept this part of themselves. They become more and more aware and insightful about their own ego defenses, their need to defend and appear some particular way to others, good, successful, attractive, rich, these needs have lifted, and they now have the freedom to express their emotions, to express their vulnerabilities and uncertainties. And this openness can show others that being vulnerable really connects us to one another. There's no pride in their actions. Instead, their actions are simply a means of service. And unlike earlier stages of ego, Magicians are well aware of the ego's cleverness when it comes to self-preservation. It's the first time when the ego becomes obvious to itself. In finding complete and ultimate self-knowledge through effort and reasoning is seen as deceptive and unachievable. And this is because all conscious thought is recognized as constructed. Our own language influences thought. Therefore, it must be separate from the underlying truth. Through further introspection, magicians can see straight through their own attempts at meaning making, and they become aware of the paradoxes inherent in rational thought. They can see that much of their stress and unhappiness is due to this constant judging of what is good and what's not good. They have a powerful understanding of human nature and human interactions. Magicians have a desire to unravel this inherent need for explanations and unlearn their own automatic conditioned programming by the surrounding culture. And to do this, they practice self-observation. They pay attention 
to their emotional and their rational behavior. They watch their habits of judging, of analyzing, and reflecting to create an ever more accurate theory of life and nature. They see these pursuits of constructing theories as further methods to disguise the realization that their own self-image is temporary. So at this stage, the magician isn't just aware of their cultural conditioning, but they're also aware of the predicament we all have of living in a world influenced by language. As self-awareness increases through self-observation, access to intuition, physical states, dreams, and other transpersonal material heightens. Beyond these increased abilities, these sources of knowledge become just as important as rational thought for making sense of experience and for finding truth and meaning in life. Throughout post-conventional stages of ego development, this capacity to draw from and appreciate insights from non-rational sources of information increases. Most importantly, a regular practice of self-observation often leads to this spontaneous experience of a direct mode of being where the knower and the known momentarily merge and the personal sense of self disappears. This is what many refer to as a peak experience or being in a state of flow or a bliss experience. During self-observation, magicians report more often than those at earlier stages that they're witnessing the train of thoughts and feelings come and go without trying to direct them. And this is experienced as moments of freedom from the ego's constant efforts to control and self-affirm. These short moments end as soon as one goes back into the left brain by judging, analyzing, or labeling the experience. There are a few others like the magician and they may fear not being understood in their complexity and their experiences. They may feel some guilt over feeling as though they're better than others. And when they observe themselves, they witness their own self attachment and need for a permanent self identity through bigger intellectual theories about the self. They also have a greater tolerance for how others deal with their own life problems, even though at the same time they can see the shortfalls and the limitations of others' solutions. Magicians will fulfill their own chosen destiny independently and courageously while fully realizing their fundamental aloneness. And any depression they might experience is likely about their essential aloneness and inability to create any sort of lasting meaning. Magicians are the first stage of ego that looks at all experience in terms of change and evolution. They understand others in terms of their development and they have insight into others' personalities. They can listen, have empathy toward others, and they can give transformational straight feedback. Magicians also have access to their own past ways of meaning making in a much deeper way than they did at earlier stages. And this allows them to tailor their interactions with others. For example, they may choose to influence someone in the diplomat ego stage by asserting their own power as a diplomat. And as consultants and mentors, they can adjust their style to the client's needs, letting them find their own way through empathetic listening, challenging ideas, or helping them gain the courage to push the boundaries of their own current way of meaning making in the world. Magicians reject the self-importance and self-centeredness of the previous ego stage and its need for self-affirmation. 
in the strategist ego stage, there was this strong desire for others to become the most that they could be. However, the magician sees this need for others to change as a basic flaw in themselves. And like the strategist, magicians generally use mature defenses like sublimation and non-hostile humor as they become more aware and insightful about their own weaknesses and defense styles. And they may deliberately choose a less mature behavior style. And for the magician, it's the peak experiences, those experiences where they lose track of self and of time. These experiences help to put into perspective the ego self's temptation for this exaggerated sense of power and responsibility. They're capable of perceiving the structure of their own thought processes and then comparing them to that of others. And they're intrigued by this intrinsic human need we have for meaning making. As leaders, magicians tend to build their own organizations or they work alone doing what they perceive to be their best contribution to humanity. They like to take on the roles of catalysts or transformers, but then they readily leave when they feel that their transformational work is done. Now, while others may seek success in terms of glory or legacy, the magician defines success as when they've made themselves dispensable. That is, the organization itself has become transformative and autonomous. I hope you've enjoyed this series. Don't miss the final session in the nine stages of ego development when we discuss the characteristics of stage six, the unitive or ironous stage. As always, I'll include all the relevant links for ego development theory in the description below. Take care, I'll see you soon, and let me know if there are any magicians out there.